Welcome to The Commute, a Bible study podcast designed to turn your commute into an opportunity to grow in your faith. Whether you're sure of what you believe or you're not sure what to believe, this podcast is designed to help you better understand who Jesus is, what the Bible's all about, and how that applies to your life today. I'm your host, Pastor Matt, and I'm excited to dive into this week's episode of The Commute. Well, hey, welcome to The Commute. Pastor Matt here with my co-host. It's me again, Kenzie. <laughs> like, it's me again. If you haven't watched other episodes, you don't get to know who I am. Yeah, I should have just said it's me again because I just left it there. Yeah, just mic drop. That's kind of like that. It's me. You should know me because I'm that famous. It was kind of like one of those. Mm. I'm Kenzie. <laughs> <laughs> That has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about today. No, today we're looking at the last part of the Gospel of John. And here's the crazy thing. So if you've been tracking with this reading plan or tracking with the Gospel of John, you know, I said one of the great ways to get into reading the Bible, you know, and the way the reason we broke up the reading plan like this is if you want, it's totally legitimate. Just spend a year in the Gospels, right? And then we've got it tracked out so that you'll go through each Gospel four times throughout the year. Um, so you've been through this before, I know. But one of the cool things to track with is starting in verse chapter 13 is all of a sudden everything slows down, right? Everything was kind of paced over a long period of time. And now we're really going to focus in on 13 all the way through 21. And you're looking at like the last uh, week of Jesus' life, uh, excuse me, leading up to the cross and stuff. And um, it starts with Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And now they're in that last supper. Right. And if you are familiar with uh, kind of the church year calendar, right, we always celebrate the Last Supper Monday, Thursday, and then you step into Good Friday and then boom, Easter Sunday. Right. So John is covering a lot of material in a short amount of time. And so what he's doing is he's giving you all these important pieces that Jesus gave his disciples right before he went to the cross. All these things that in the moment, they're trying to kind of go, okay, man, this sounds like a lot of important stuff, right? All the way up till, boom, Jesus goes out and is sent to the cross and then rises from the dead. And so when you're reading through John, really key in on these chapters, because these are the chapters where Jesus is saying, here's what I want you to know before I go. And then here's the hope that I'm giving you um, to help you along the way. And so, Kenzie, what is that thing that Jesus gives to help us along the way? I mean, I immediately think of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit for the win. Yeah. 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 I, I love, I love this promise in all of the gospels of like when Jesus says, and it's kind of all over the place in here, like you said, but he basically is like, I'm going, I'll be back. Yeah. And then he also like promises that like, you're not going to be alone when I, after I go, which I just think is like really fun. And especially because like, just, I mean, we could probably observe this just from reading it, but Jesus kind of tells people everything, but the people don't really listen. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. I mean, it's a crazy. total shock. It's a whole, all the way through the Bible. Like the Israelites not listening to God and then being like, God, where are you? And he's like, Hey, I told you all of this was going to happen or sends a prophet who speaks just straight truth to them. And then they're always like, wait, what? No one told me that. And every time they're like, yes, we did. Mm -hmm. um, no, but he gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit, but he also is telling them exactly what's going on. And then right after all of this goes down, they have this like sense of hopelessness. Like they're like, yeah. oh no, we just, we just lost... Jesus. And then he comes back just like he said he would. And then mm -hmm. he gives him the Holy Spirit just like he said he would. <laughs> yep. He follows through on his promises. And like, that is gospel truth for us today. <laughs> so a couple questions before we really key in on that, because I think you brought up some really cool stuff. You know, um, for those that know your story, you're like newer to faith. Like you came to faith in high school, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not like growing up as a kid, like, learning all these different things like the Holy Spirit and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So you come to faith for the first time, you're getting connected with all this stuff. So you start learning these different things. How, how did people explain this idea of the Holy Spirit to you? And what did that mean to you as you were starting to like grab a hold of that understanding? 
Ooh, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, everyone kind of explained the Holy Spirit to me by saying, the Holy Spirit's really complicated, but he's part of the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I don't know what the Trinity is either, but cool. Good talk. <laughs> um, no, and then I actually, it was super helpful. Sometimes you learn best by teaching other people mm-hmm. things. Um, and I worked at summer camp my after my sophomore year of college, and we talked about what the Holy Spirit gives us. And that's that he helps us remember and like puts God's word in our heart, essentially, and works faith into us. And after doing the same Bible study week in and week out and like all the kids had the same question of like, who's the Holy Spirit? And I'm like, well, it's really complicated, but he's part of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you just fed him back that, you I know. I was like, you should know this. Didn't, like your youth yeah, leader did yeah. you that's really complicated. Like One of those moments where you're like, well, who do you think the Holy Spirit yeah. is? <laughs> Why do you ask? <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I never really got a good understanding of it. And like scripture, actually just going through it has given me the best picture mm-hmm. of who the Holy Spirit is and that he, he gives us knowledge and he like – He's with us, inside of us, through baptism, and uh, that our faith is in our own. Our whole faith is through the Holy Spirit. And, uh, I mean, that I don't know if that answered your question at all, but... Um, <laughs> no, I think, I think so. I think, and I think a couple things to keep in mind, like, you know, there are things that whether you're new to faith or you've been in faith your whole life are just complicated and hard to understand because, you know, there's you're talking about a faith in a living God that created everything. Like if you're not bumping up against something you don't understand or some question that you have, you're, you're probably not bumping up against God. You know, I think, you know, we're all going to grow in our understanding of who he is. We're all going to grow in, in, and just at times have questions that we're like, what's going on? Like, I'll never forget. Um, I had this, uh, preaching professor and he's awesome. Dr. Schmidt. And he, told us that one time he was working out with a friend and um you know they were in the gym lifting and his friend started asking him about the trinity and holy spirit and you know being a seminary professor dr schmidt had answer after answer to just kind of like throw at him and then all of a sudden he started seeing his friend get like kind of frustrated and he's like what's going on and then it clicked for him he realized that he was throwing out answers that it took the church 400 years to figure out (laughs) <laughs> and, and it's like sometimes we have even quick answers to complicated things because somebody really wrestled with the reality of who God is and digging into scripture and then being able to like learn how to articulate that. And so I think, you know, taking time to realize it's really complicated, you know, but also seeing how you kind of went into scripture and that picture was formed from God's word of who he is. And then you start to like, you start to give yourself images for understanding who he is and how he works. Yeah. And I think it's really true that like you can, if you're not misunderstanding something, you're probably, or not understanding or misunderstanding. I feel like sometimes those go hand in hand because we use our own worldview to paint pictures Mm -hmm. of the world around us. That's why Jesus spoke in parables Yeah, because he was like, Here's something you probably won't understand this eternal concept that I'm just going to throw at you after I feed you some food. But like, this is kind of what I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's huge. And I think too, like, this is what I love in your story. You didn't wait till you got to a point where you're like, I've got it all figured out. Now I can teach somebody. And I think sometimes we as the church, we're waiting for that till we're willing to like share our faith. We're like, okay, well, I don't know as much as the pastor does about this stuff. So I don't know if I should really be the one sharing it. No, like share it because in sharing your faith and trying to live it out in being willing to sit down and read through the Bible with somebody, you're actually going to grow more in your understanding and your faith. Cause what, it, what helped Kinsey grow in her understanding of the Holy Spirit? Having to talk to a bunch of what, middle school age? Nine-year-olds, yeah. You know, nine, <laughs> nine-year-old, not even middle school yet. A bunch of nine-year-olds about who the Holy Spirit is. And some of their just straight up honest questions about it it you know that kind of stuff forms us and so don't hesitate to like dig in and share that but i think i think one of my um favorite ways of thinking about the holy spirit is he's the he's the god that goes with you you know he's the one that when you're reading scripture 
is helping you understand what you read, is putting community around you so that you can grow in who Jesus is. There's there's moments where something pops out to you in scripture. Um, the joke of that's like, that's the Holy Spirit highlighter, right? It's that yeah. moment where the Holy <laughs> Spirit says, hey, you need this right here. Really key in on this one. You know, he's he's that he's that spirit of God that's in constant communication with God. And he's lifting up your prayers in ways that there's, there's moments where you're like, I don't even know what I should be praying for right now. Well, in that moment, guess what the Holy Spirit's doing? He's going, Matt doesn't know right now, but you know, he needs this, this, and this, and we need to help him here. You know, it's like, you know, he's that person that's constantly like guiding you, which I think is so cool. So, and this is where he gets introduced. But I think what's also really interesting about this section is Jesus is, preparing his disciples for everything to change. And he tells them in the midst of everything changing, they have everything they need in the Holy Spirit. And I think that's really cool because we've been living through a time where everything's changing. It's it's changing to an exhausting point at times. Like I know we were talking about this one day and you're like, Man, I've, you know, I did an internship in COVID. I did my last year of school in COVID. I could, <laughs> I'm done with this stuff, right? And I'm like the same way. I'm like, man, I've had to do the last two years of ministry in the midst of COVID and everything changing and everybody wrestling with that change. It's like, I'm done with that stuff, you know? But the reality is when everything changes, we have the very same hope that Jesus gave his disciples when everything was about to change. We have the same Holy Spirit. We actually have Jesus' word in front of us. So we have everything we need to be able to navigate changing times and step into a ministry context that's going to be new and unexpected for us, but it's not new and unexpected for God. God knows exactly what we need as we need it. He's just like Jesus is preparing his disciples. God prepares us and helps us move into this critical thing. In fact, that's probably what I love. So um, I'm not trying to fast forward, but Jesus dies. Um, he, you know, which is huge. Right. And then he has this thing. It is finished, which in the Greek is this term tetelestai, which means it is totally and completely complete. It's like some, a past action that happens and then has future implications. We've done whole episodes on that before. So you could dig through the old commutes and see that, but there's this really cool line, John 20, 30 to 31 that I've always loved. And it says this, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that by believing you may have life in his name. So I think we never have everything, but we always have what we need. Absolutely. Mic drop. That's that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, it's been fun to <laughs> fun to hang out with you here on the commute. Kinsey, thanks for sharing your story and sharing, you know, just your journey with figuring out what the Holy Spirit is. And I just want to encourage you all, man, we've got lots of great resources. Dig in to the stuff we're doing on the commute. You can open up the Bethlehem Church Live mobile app, get into other resources that will help you grow in your faith. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll always release things on there as well as live stream services or just come join us live because one of the best things that helps us grow is actually finding a way to gather together uh, in community and be worshiping together and opening up scripture together. So it was a blast seeing you here on the commute. Look forward to seeing you next week. And of course, always hope to be able to connect with you in person right here at Bethlehem. Thanks for checking out this episode of The Commute. For more information on The Commute or to join the Commute Bible Reading Plan, simply download the Bethlehem Church Live mobile app or go to Bethlehem Church Live slash The Commute.